All right, guys, welcome to our first video. So I'm going to try to make a lot of these little informational videos for you guys and do actual demonstrations, but I'll also post some things for you guys to look at. I found a couple of fun websites that have great videos, and uh, YouTube is also always a great source. But I thought it would be fun to also see some demonstrations done by me because I've always liked doing science with you guys. It's going to be really different being at home all this time and not in my classroom and doing all the hands-on experiments. So first things first, welcome to, I guess, my science room. It's uh, one of our rooms in our apartment here. Uh, it's kind of my little refugee camp. I got all the animals here, so you can see crazy fish behind me on this side and Orville's directly behind me and Tesla's over there. So we're all in this room together and uh, doing some science for you guys. So uh, we're going to start with our first activity here and in this first activity we are going to use something called the force. And uh, we might have heard of the force before. Uh, first force we think of is probably the force from Star Wars. So let's use the force right now. So I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to concentrate really hard here. I'm going to use the force on my object here and let's see if I can get that to move. Go. Look at that, see all the force. And I can use the force to make my object move around. And am I really actually using the force right now? I don't think so because there's an invisible force that we can use to make objects move. And some of you are going, I know what that force is right now, Mr. Weiss. And that force is called magnets. So, magnets are a lot of fun. They make great toys. I'm looking for my object right now because this room is uh, fairly organized, but not 100%. There it is. And I was using uh, one of my magnets underneath. This magnet on the top is called a neodymium magnet. It's a type of rare earth magnet. They're very strong. They come in all different sizes. Some are so strong that we would never even be able to remove it from certain surfaces. I'm going to move that to the side. And the magnet I have underneath is part of a toy. And some of you might have seen these before. I, I, I love these. And I love the sound that they make. And these are called clacker magnets. And so you can see that they come together very quickly and they make that sound. So I'm going to put these off to the side as well and let's start talking about what we are doing today. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at different types of magnets and our question that we are going to be focusing on for this part of our lesson is uh, what is a magnetic field? So I'm going to put that here. What is a magnetic field? All right. And so we're going to be observing magnetic fields and seeing what they do and how they interact with each other. So uh, magnets are these invisible fields and the best demonstration tool are what we call a bar magnet. Okay, and This is the classic magnet that we usually see and we can see here that this magnet has what we call two poles. Okay, So we say that they have poles. Okay, P-O-L-E-S. All right, And if we look here we can see that it has a south pole and a north pole. All right? And we're going to be looking at how these poles interact with different objects and other magnets. Now, if you did not know this, the Earth is actually a giant magnet. Okay? Um, so, when we're looking at the Earth, the Earth is actually creates these things called magnetic fields. And these magnetic fields are incredibly important because they actually protect us from solar radiation. Um, they're actually what cause the aurora borealis, the lights that you see, what we call the northern lights. And um, something really cool to look up, you can Google that. And we're going to be looking at how we can detect those fields. And I'll put this down here because we have our different poles. and. The Earth being a, diff a giant magnet, we can use those for navigation. And some of you might have one of these at home. And this is a tool that we can use to detect magnetic fields. And this is called a compass. All right, now you see this compass is kind of swinging back and forth. That's because this is actually an air-filled compass, not a liquid-filled compass. Uh, liquid-filled compasses slow down a lot faster. But we can see, I have to move it over here because it does like to interact with any magnet that's nearby. And we can see that north in my apartment is that way. Okay, that's north, all right, away from the window, which is on this side. And magnetic fields attract these compasses. Now, the Earth's magnetic field is, I mean, in a way, relatively strong because it attracts this magnet. But all I have to do is put a magnet closer to it. And you can see that as soon as this magnet gets anywhere, even remotely close to it, it takes over and cancels out the magnetic field of our planet. So we can use these though to see how magnetic fields interact. If I bring over another compass on this side you can see 
a second to slow down, being an air-filled compass, that these compasses are affected by the magnet in the center. Okay, and you see it's just swishing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so eventually that will stop moving. Uh, I might not have enough patience for that, we'll see. There we go. And you can see that on this one, the red arrow is attracted to the south side, the southern pole of this magnet, and the silver side is attracted to the northern side, okay? So if I flip this, you can see that both compasses also flip around, all right? You can see that this one flipped because now the north is over here, attracted to that side, and the south is attracted to the red side of this one, okay? So you can see that these fields interact with different objects around them. Now, I want to see how does a magnet interact with another magnet. And we have two words that we have to remember to use. So here's one of our science word poles. And I'm going to put two more science words here. The first one is attract. Okay. And we can also say the verb attraction. All right. So there's one of our science words. So I'll put that over here. And then we also have the word repel. And we use repulsion. Okay, we talk about it as a term repulsion. All right, so we're going to look at these terms and see what they mean right now and how magnets attract and repel. So I'm going to bring another bar magnet to the scene right here, and I don't want to get these magnets too close together. And the thing is, if we look at these two magnets, right now they're not really affecting each other. So magnetic fields kind of have to be pretty close together before they interact with each other, and that is going to be one of the things we look at in a later activity. So let's see what happens if I flip this magnet around here and I start to move them closer to each other. Let's see what we encounter here. What do we observe? All right, so we move this in here and eventually as we get closer up, oh, hey, where are you going? Come back here. Ah, 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 ah. So we can see there is an interaction here, but it's not quite what we thought. Usually we think of magnets they like to stick together. These magnets are what we call repelling. This is called a repulsion force. Okay, so repulsion is when the magnets push away from each other. So we can see here a north pole and a north pole repel. Alright, the same could be said if we flip these around and we bring them close together, the south pole and the south pole repel each other. Alright, so what we call this is like sides. Okay, so southern pole and southern pole repel each other. The same can be said about northern pole and northern pole. Now what if we try, if we try to put these together, look at what's happening here as they push apart until it wants to, it literally wants to flip itself around. It doesn't want to be anywhere near the same type of pole. But if we do north and south pole, we can see that those magnets come together and we call that attract. Alright, so this is attraction between two poles. So north and the south attract to each other. All right, so we can see that is some of the forces that affect magnets. Now, if we had some iron filings, it was one of the things that I forgot at school to bring home with me, but we can look at what's called a magnetic field. All right, so if I switch over here, I'll get bring up a picture, and you can see here's the magnetic field of our planet, and this is that invisible force that surrounds our magnet that I had out on the table. If we had iron filings and we shook them over it on a piece of paper, you would actually be able to see that magnetic field appear, and it's these arcing energy that go from one side of the magnet to the other. So, the information that I provided in this video, I want you to use this to fill out the form that is attached to the assignment, and make sure you submit that form to show me what you learned from our video. All right, guys, more videos to come. I miss you guys, and there will be more 